Hello everyone. I am Saad Anwar and I am online coach and chemistry instructor. I have been teaching chemistry since many years and what today we are going to discuss, we are going to discuss a second lecture and that lecture is about electrolysis of molten compound. In this video we will understand what happened, which product will appear at cathode and which product will appear at anode when we do electrolysis of molten compounds. So let's start. Topic is electrolysis of molten compound. And I have chosen different molten compounds to explain this. For example, uh, this is lecture number six, this is lecture number two. Previously, I have uploaded lecture number one, and it's quite beneficial for you if you if you will watch lecture number one as well. So, guys, I have chosen a molten compound. For example, lead bromide, PBBr2. This is lead bromide. I will do electrolysis of lead bromide, then you will see which product will appear at cathode and which product will appear at anode. Usually in the exam, they will ask you, please tell me which product will appear at cathode and which product, product will gonna form at anode when we do electrolysis of any molten compounds and when we do electrolysis of aqueous compound, the story is entirely different. When we do electrolysis of molten compounds, we get a different predictable product. But in case of aqueous solution, in case of aqueous compound, it's quite tricky to predict which product will gonna form at a node and which product will going to form at cathode but in case of molten product, in, in case of molten compounds, it's very it's simple. It's very easy to predict, to tell which product will form at cathode and which product will gonna form at anode. For example, in case of lead bromide, if this is lead molten lead bromide, what the term molten means, molten means the malted. This is molten lead bromide. This is malted lead bromide. So, so it gives two ions. One is lead ion, other is bromide ion. When we will do electrolysis of lead bromide ion, we will get a lead ion, lead 2 positive, and we will get a bromide ions. So you see, lead ions carry positive charge and bromide ions carry negative charge. So you have to tell me which ion will form, uh, which ion will move towards anode, and which ion will move towards cathode. Now let me draw a diagram of electrolytic cell. I just imagine this is an this is a simple electrolysis cells. It has electrode and it has anode. This is one electrode. This is another electrode. I have connected this two electrode with the battery. You know, battery has two terminal. What is positive terminal? And other is negative terminal. The positive terminal has been shown by a big line and the negative terminal has been shown by a smaller line. So this is positive terminal, this is negative terminal, the electrode which is connected to positive terminal of battery. We call that electrode anode and it carry which charge? It carry positive charge. The electrode which is connected to negative terminal of battery, we call that electrode cathode and cathode carry which charge? Cathode carry negative charge, all right guys. So in my solution, I have molten lead bromide. It means I have a lot of lead ions, a lot of lead ions in my solution. Oh no, this is not solution. This is molten form. Sorry guys, this is not solution. This is molten form. And I have a lot of bromide ions. All right. So when, when electricity will pass, then this, when electricity will pass, then this lead bromide ions converted into lead ions and bromide ions. So I have lead ion and I have bromide ion. And now my, this anode carry positive charge, this cathode carry negative charge. So you have to tell me which ions will migrate towards cathode and which ion will migrate towards anode. So it's quite obvious, it's quite clear. At anode, you see that all the bromide ions will migrate towards anode. Why? Because anode carry positive charge, okay. The not carry positive charge, 
So all these bromide ions will reach towards anode. And what happen at anode? What actually takes place at anode? Oxidation. And what oxidation is? Guys, what oxidation is? This is loss of electron. So when bromide ions will reach towards anode, it, it loses electron. If I have two bromide ions, that it loses two electron and convert it into bromine gas. This is bromine gas. This is bromine gas. And these two electrons will, uh, will, will be lost here. And uh, it, it means at anode, you will see bubbles of bromine gas. It means the product at anode will be bromine gas. And at cathode, you know cathode carry negative charge. And what happened at cathode? Reduction. You can remember this by red cat, red cat. I will share red cat. Okay, reduction. What reduction is gain of electron, gain of electron. So when lead ion reach towards all the lead ions reach towards to, towards cathode, then these two lead ions will get will get will gain two electron and convert it into lead lead matter in solid form. So this happen in case of electrolysis of molten compounds. So nothing difficult in case of molten compounds. Uh, we get two ions, one is positive ions and other is negative ions. So it's quite predictable which, which product will appear at cathode and which product will appear at anode. Now let me open your textbook to explain these things. You see guys, this is your textbook. Oh guys, this is your textbook. And the topic is electrolysis of molten lead bromide. And I, you, you can read all these things from here as well. You can take screenshots, you can take notes. I have discussed this with you. So this is the reaction. So remember that bromine gas will appear at anode. Mm. Okay. At the anode, bromide ions give up electrons. Yes, red brown bromine vapors bubble off. Red brown bromine vapors bubbles off. Oh, this is we hear this. Why? Because we melt, we want to melt this compound. Okay, so going towards next, what next is? Let's see what next is, the electrolysis of all other, all other molten compounds. So, the pattern is same for all and each molten ionic compounds of two elements, electrolysis, electrolysis break molten ionic compound down to its elements, giving the metal at the cathode and the non-metal at the anode. Yes, yes, remember. We will get metal at the cathode, like we will get lead at the cathode, and we will get non-metal at the anode. And I have chosen a few different uh, molten compounds. For example, let me show you. If I have molten sodium chloride, if I have molten sodium chloride, you see, sodium metal will appear at cathode and chlorine gas will appear at an anode, but the thing is entirely changed. If I, I if I don't have molten sodium chloride, if I have concentrated solution of sodium chloride, if I have concentrated solution of sodium chloride, then the product which will appear at cathode is quite different. And what is the story behind this? I will explain in my next video lecture. And this topic is electrolysis of aqueous solution. In case of elect in case of electrolysis of aqueous solution, thing is situation is entirely different. So right now I'm going to end this class. This is my second video lecture in uh, in my third video lecture. 
in my third video lecture, I will gonna discuss electrolysis of aqueous solution. And then I will discuss what factors will affect the process of electrolysis and the nature of electrode, how the nature of electrode, if electrode is inert and if electrode is not inert, then what happened with the process of electrolysis? I will discuss in my next video lecture. So, so okay, thank you. I will be waiting for your response, for your with feedback comments. Thank you for watching this video. Okay, goodbye.